Thanks for staying with us. Nigeria has dropped again on the Corruption Perception Index, CPI, published by Transparency International, TI. According to the 2021 ranking released on Tuesday by the agency, Nigeria dropped five places. The country scored 24 out of 100 points, ranking 154 out of 180 countries. Meanwhile, the presidency has described the report as a sensational, or as sensational and baseless rating on Nigeria and the fight against corruption. Well, this caution was made this time around is Deputy Director Serap Kolawale Oluwadari, and of course we'll also have Debo Adinro, who is the Chairman Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, joining us as well. Uh, good evening to you, Kolau. Many thanks for joining us on the show. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it is a pleasure. I'm sure you have followed uh, the, you know, the publication since it was released yesterday and it has generated lots of uh, reactions uh, amongst Nigerians. And of course, the presidency has actually come out today to also react. But let me just get your opening thoughts concerning this because it is really alarming that we have been talking about uh, anti-graft war, you know, and specifically these uh, index uh, measures corruption in the public sector. What are your thoughts uh, exactly? Is corruption getting worse on that this present administration? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's alarming to anyone who has been in Nigeria and who lives in Nigeria. Um, and to ask, asking about my thoughts about the fight against corruption in Nigeria, particularly under the administration of President Mahmoud um, we can not say that the fight against corruption has, has moved on quite well. And that is, well, that is obvious, really, for any watcher of, of events in Nigeria. What we've seen is more of a motion without movement. Activity motion without, without, without movement? Result. Yes. Mm. I'm talking about the fight against corruption under President Mahmoudou Buhari uh, from 2015. And uh, to put it in proper context, we knew the mantra of this administration before they came into government. Uh, the hopes were high. You ask me about the fight against corruption, but the little appeared to have been done. And there are various initiatives to mention to measure this, a part of which was also employed by the Transparency International India methodology. And this is quite uh, clear for anyone who has uh, followed the event in Nigeria keenly. You can look at uh, legislation, for instance. There are key legislations that would have aided the fight against corruption that uh, the president. I did not accent to, and this is not about legislation not being introduced, but legislation that actually scaled through the National Assembly, but the President refused to assent to. The key among that is the audit bill, which would have empowered the office of the Auditor General of the Federation, and to allow him or her, whoever owns the office, to do key work as part of the, uh, the audit uh, accountability cycle. The President refused to, uh, refused to assent to the bill. Also, the proceeds of crime bill. Which, would, which is a very important part of um, uh, the anti-corruption framework, would have enabled uh, the stakeholders in that sector to manage the proceeds of corruption, to prevent these uh, proceeds from being mismanaged. The, the president, again, refused to assent to that bill. And, and the key legislation that should have been passed, for instance, the Whistleblowers Act to protect whistleblowers and to encourage people to come forward, has not been passed. So how can we say that this administration is fighting corruption? And most importantly, as one of the key drivers of corruption in Nigeria, transparency on accountability, or the more at peace, they put the lack of it in governments that aided corruption in no small way. And this administration has not done enough, if you ask, and have done well at all. all right. in transparent. Governance is still opaque as ever. All right, Kola Wale, we'll come back to you and we'll get more of your thoughts concerning this particular issue. But let us bring in Debo Adeniro, Chairman Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Kako. Uh, good evening to you, Debo. Many thanks for joining us on the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure. Let me get your candid opinion concerning this particular issue, Nigeria ranking 154 out of 180 countries. You know, I listened to the, uh, the presidential spokesperson this morning, and he talked about um, how uh, it is not just an indictment to the government you know, alone, but also, you know, Nigerians. You know, if I put it differently, 
is the government expecting Nigerians to actually stamp out corruption for it uh, when it actually had said that it will do that when you know it was campaigning in a way before it came into power uh, in 2019? Thank you very much. Um, we should first and foremost uh, note, I mean, take note of the fact that what we are assessing is a perception index of uh, anti-corruption fights in the country. And uh, of course, if there is opacity in the fight against corruption, the perception will have been different if people are not aware of uh, the volume, the, 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 the magnitude of corruption crimes that are being committed on daily basis in both, of, uh, in both public and private sectors of the economy. I believe that it is the uh, volume of uh, cases that have been exposed by the existing anti-corruption agencies that made the perception stand the way it does. Yeah. And if uh, the fight against corruption progresses, the rating will be even lower before it begins to look upwards. Um, yes, I heard that there are, I mean, from uh, my brother, Kolawole, that... Uh, there are a number of legislations that the present administration has not signed into law. But then we have a number of other legislations that have been working for the administration's uh, efforts. The little effort that they are making, we should not underrate it. And that is what we are doing. We can only encourage the administration to do more. Uh, the operationalization of the, uh, 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 all the legislation that have been put in place by the previous administrations were not done, maybe because there wasn't political will on the part of the previous administration to make those legislations work. Uh, that is why we are still where we are. If all of those legislations have been put into practice, I believe that we will have moved a notch uh, further than where we are. For all example, right. I, I keep on saying that the BVN, the, the, the Treasury Single Account, have been very helpful. The um, SCUMUR, that is Special Control Unit against Money Laundering, the uh, ACTJA itself that um, gives, I mean, uh, 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 the, the adjudication Criminal of justice. Um, impetus. Mm. So, yes. So, uh, are part and parcel of those that will make uh, the fight against corruption easier to, to fight. And prevention, they say, is better than care. There are a number of other legislations that uh, make the commission of the crimes difficult for those who want to commit it. And that is uh, one way by which the administration has uh, reduced the impunity with which uh, corruption crimes have been committed in the past. All right, we are not yet where we are supposed to be, mm. but we are no longer where you used to be. It doesn't matter what the perception is as at now, mm. but as, uh, as soon as uh, the fight progresses in the right direction, if the, uh, all the agencies, all the arms of government, all the tiers of government put their heads together and... Uh, have a, a commonality of opinion, of strategy on how to fight corruption and they really make the existing law to work, I believe that in no time we will be uh, singing Hosanna that we are getting out of that. All right, fire. thank you, Debo. Right, let me yeah. get back to um, Barrister Kola Walin now. I, I, you have um, been uh, following, uh, you know, Debo um, Daniel's, uh, you know, position. Uh, specifically, he said it doesn't matter what the perception is right now. That over time, would see all of, uh, you know, the efforts being put in place by the federal government. This particular administration, you know, it might come to light over time. But I still want to talk about, uh, you know, the 
the credibility and acceptability of um, this particular uh, index that was just released by, you know, TI, you know, I'm still quoting the presidency, you know, and they have come out to say that it is baseless and sensational, specifically a family additional said that uh, should we be believing uh, an index or put together by foreigners, you know, should we be, uh, also be talking about um, you know, rating ourselves uh, as a country to know what, uh, you know, Nigerians actually perceive um, corruption to be in the country? Kola <laughs> I find that statement very, it, it's funny actually, because uh, you cannot divorce perception of the people from governance. So if this is a if this is a survey, if this is a report that is based on what the people perceive as a level of corruption, it is as important as any kind of research uh, about the state of corruption itself. Public participation is a key part of democracy, and in this uh, administration, encouraging public participation in governance is key. It does not only go to acceptability, but also it will conv uh, conveys a, a sovereignty. Uh, as a ability on the government itself. So for the people to perceive that the fight against corruption is not progressing shows a lot about the efforts on government, either in the fight against corruption or in convincing the people uh, that they are actually uh, fighting uh, corruption. And when you look at the key indices and the methodology where, um, employed in this reports, you will see that really, it, it really puts in place objective criteria. For instance, it looks at diversion of public funds, instances of bribery, uh, prevalence of officials using uh, public office for private gain. It looks at rectification and bureaucracy in, in governments. It looks at, the, for instance, effective criminal prosecution for corrupt officials. It also looked at uh, the legal protection for whistleblowers. It also looked at the state capture and access of civil society to information, which goes to transparency and accountability. So you, we cannot um, downplay the, the effect and the objectivity of this report. What the government needs to do is to demonstrate political will to fight corruption, which, if you ask me, from 2015 till now has not been at all. And it's not for a lack of opportunity. The president had, had enough opportunity time and again to demonstrate not only the political will to fight corruption, but to set an example that um, he will not to tolerate corruption at all. And a very good example we can give, which you're all familiar with, is the report of your of the general of the federation that has come in year in, year out. Detailing now a lot of funds that could not be accounted for. And we've seen the president do nothing about this. I have been in mind that it is, it is the president that appoints the Auditor General of the Federation under Section 85 and 86 of the Constitution. And for example, last year, the Auditor General in November 2021 released the 2019 report and detailed how eight ministries, departments, and agencies of government could not account for 49 billionaires. And with the great deficit in the 2022 budget of more than six trillion, you would think that the president would take action not only to make sure that those found culpable for this act uh, face justice, but to seek recovery of those funds. And not, nothing has been done. And that also goes to the various um, funds and allegations that, of corruption that have been made. They are in the public domain. We've not seen anything done about that. And when we look at that, um, a very good example will also be the, the budgetary allocation. Um, to agencies of government. All what we see is uh, the EU amount uh, budgeted through the appropriation process. But when it comes to procurement and how the budget is implemented, the opacity sets in. We do not even have enough information of that. And so in the absence of transparency and accountability, corruption tried. And this government has not displayed enough political will uh, to nip that in, in, in the right. world at all. And then we can talk about the impunity and the rule of law. This government has not tried, not at all, in disobeying orders of the court. All right, thank you, Kola Wali. Uh, let, let's try and uh, get some um, last words from Debo now as uh, we conclude on this particular diction, uh, sorry, discourse, that is. Uh, Debo, you have, uh, you know, been following, and uh, Kola Wali seems to feel that uh, the federal government is not showing enough um, political will to want to stamp um, this issue of corruption completely out of the country. Do you agree? And um, going forward, how do we begin to, you know, correct all the societal ills? Because if you ask me, the issue of corruption, you know, has really eaten deep. If you go to the public schools, uh, in the university, there are lots of um, open corruption, you know, for admissions and all of that. Uh, what do we begin to do as a nation to ensure that we get a very good perception not only from Nigerians, but of course from the international community. Debo. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, we should realize that the, the uh, administration has not been 
advertising itself enough and uh, it's not even friendly to the media both social and the traditional media and that is why some of the efforts are not known to the public and that's uh, inform what the perception would be but i, I still agree with uh Wale that enough grants uh, that ought to have been covered are yet to be covered and the kind of flurry of activities that we expect that uh, the government will embark on to ensure that it is exemplary in the uh, observation of uh, legislations that uh, controls corruption. The government has not given itself enough matching order to ensure that within government uh, MDAs that corruption is made uh, an anathema. Uh, for example, what ICPC should have been working on with uh, Act 2, that is anti-corruption and transparency unit that's supposed to uh, exist in all the MDAs. Government has not given it enough teeth to bite. And to even uh, at CCB, when um, assets and uh, liabilities are declared by public officials, uh, uh, verification of all of the uh, declared assets have not been diligently done. And uh, nobody is being prosecuted for anticipatory declaration and a number of other cases that are still pending in the Ministry of Justice. And as a matter of fact, it's like the Minister of Justice has uh, deliberately uh, constitutes its, himself or that ministry as a cog in the wheel of progress in the fight against corruption. And that is why several uh, cases are still pending in court and several lawyers can circumvent the course of justice and will not make action to work the way it All is right, expected of it. Right. And the president himself should be uh, the, the good example that we can cite. And all of the, the uh, profligacy that is still going on at the presidency, there are things that the president could do without, but we still see the president condoning them. Those are some of the things that could inform the uh, perception of the public. All right, thank the public you, David. Will that should be garnered. Uh, so basically, uh, the government officials should, I mean, should, should, should stand as a, a shining example, not a bad example that public will... All right, thank you so much, David Adeniro. All right, yes. that's as much as we can take. We must say a very big thank you to our panelists uh, who have, uh, you know, really dealt... Uh, a, very well with this particular uh, discussion. We must say uh, thank you to Deputy Director of SERAP, Kola Wale Oluwadare and Debo Adenro, who is the Chairman, Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, KAKOA. Thank you once again, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, I thank you for staying with us, Nigerians. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. But the issue of corruption and its perception has not only eaten deeply into the fabrics of the nation's society, it's almost as though it is in our country's DNA. Now, the latest report by Transparency International isn't really surprising, as what we have seen so far is the absence of political will at the highest level and also the political tyranny. I wonder if institutions like the EFCC and ICPC are fast becoming toothless Bulldogs. However, there is an urgent need to accelerate the fight against corruption if we are to hold human rights abuses and democratic decline across the globe. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. We'll return again tomorrow. Bye for now.